good day and now we will proceed to module number four of the third quarter which is all about judging the validity of the evidence listened to so we will start on page number one and the first thing that we should do is to know the objectives of this module at the end of this learning module, you are expected to identify the features of primary and secondary sources, distinguish primary and secondary sources of information, and third one, judge the validity of evidences listened to. So in what I know part, you will put a like sign like this one that we can see in messenger in on messenger on facebook and dislike or the unlike sign for false statements so it is like true and false but the difference is you will put a like sign if it's true then unlike sign if it is false so you have here 10 items after reading each statement in each number you will identify if it's correct or not. Then for 11 to 15, you will identify the each or you will identify each of the statement if it is primary or secondary. So it is alright if you do not know what primary or secondary means. As long as you have a clue or you have um, some ideas that will pertain to primary and secondary it's okay because later we will identify the differences and the meanings of these terms so it's a continuation for what's in we will identify and have a review so we will identify the things we have discussed last module or in the previous module so the bias and prejudice you will draw a box if it's for bias then prejudice you will draw a triangle so we have five items here so identify if it's bias or prejudice so you can go back to our previous module to our previous video lesson if you still have confusion you can message you are free to message your english teacher and for what's new you will read this article with the headline bulacan governor endorses green technology for Bustos dam by manny balbin july 30 2020 4 50 pm so it happened in Bustos Bulacan <clears throat> so you will identify those you will read this article what happened so you will answer what is the article all about what is the source of the article so when you say source where did they get the information the, st the, the statistics the details like that so from where they get it or got it so what the facts about the Bustos Dam and the Bulacan provincial government were mentioned so what are the facts about Buston da Bustom Dam Bustos Dam and the Bulacan provincial government so will you consider this news accurate so are you believing that it's believable that it's true that it is worthy to believe then cite your information because maybe the sources are credible and valid like that and how significant are the presented information to you so how important why is it important for you to read that maybe because you are from Bulacan you are a Bulacan also so you should be aware of what is happening in our province so for what is it our discussion judging the validity of the evidence listened to so distinguishing primary and secondary sources 
during the transfer of information, whether through reading or listening, determining primary and secondary sources is very important. This will help us analyze better the information that we read or heard. In addition, it will help us decide whether we will be persuaded or form an argument for or against what we read or heard. So what is primary source? So when you say primary source, sources, it provides or this provide a first-hand account or evidence of an event, time, object, person, or even work of art and are considered authoritative. They represent original thinking reports on discoveries or events, or they can share new information. Often, these sources are created at the time the events occurred, but they can also include sources that are created later. Primary sources provide the original materials that enable us to get as close as possible to what happened during a particular event or time. Published materials can be viewed as primary sources if they come from time that is being discussed and were written or produced by someone with first-hand experience of the event. Often, primary sources reflect the individual viewpoint of a party participant or observer. Primary sources can be written or non-written, sound, pictures, artifacts, etc. as long as they provide raw information and first-hand evidence. So when we say primary source, meaning the owner or the one who made this kind of source is the one who really experienced, is the one who is there during that time. For example, the the world war ii so the one who can make primary source of that is the one who experienced world war ii especially those who fought during that time another example there is a news about bombing incident in mindanao so the one who can make a primary source about that bombing incident is people is the person rather who experienced during the bombing incident maybe the victim the the one who witnessed the incident like that so that is primary source meaning they they really the information came from the people who really experienced, who really witnessed a particular situation in particular time. So in exploring how an event affected people at a certain time, newspaper, editorial, or opinion pieces are considered a primary source. A scientific research present original thinking, report on discoveries, or share information, and can, diver and can therefore be used. So as a primary source, autobiographies, diaries, personal letters, and correspondence were written by people with first-hand experience of an event are very good examples of primary sources. So if you were talk about the past in your speech, argumentative essay, or persuasive essay, you cannot directly assess it yourself. So you need primary sources that were produced at the time by participants or witnesses. Example given, letters photographs or newspaper and if you were to include something current your primary sources can either be data that you collect yourself through interviews surveys experiments or sources produced by people directly involved in the topic so official documents documents or media text so what is the use of the letters photographs newspaper so for example you will make a particular article so, like what we had discussed before, that in order to make your piece reliable and valid, there should be evidences. And we should categorize our evidences, our proofs, our sources, if it's primary and secondary. So, if you will, if you will use the information from the people who experienced 
the particular topic that you want to include in your piece, in your article, therefore, it will fall under primary source. So, it is the meaning of these paragraphs. So, filter topic history, you can use the letters, diaries, photographs, video footage, official documents and records, physical objects. So, for art and literature, we have novels, poems, paintings and art installations, films and performances. So, maybe you are questioning why painting is part of primary source because there are pieces of art where it is the proof of what happened before. So they are using paintings or they were using paintings, sculptures, or any forms of art in order to preserve what they had before. Then communication and social studies, interviews, transcripts, meaning these are the dialogues happened and uttered during the interview, recordings of speeches, newspaper and magazines, social media posts. So, but be careful with the social media posts because it should be credible. Sometimes there are dummy accounts, so we should be aware and mindful if the accounts we are we are getting are really the official so law and politics the court records legal texts government documents sciences empirical studies statistical data so the examples of primary are here so as long as the one who made these sources therefore or again the one who made these sources is the one who experienced that topic, that scenario. Therefore, it is primary. So that is the thing that you should remember. The writer is the one who experienced the scenario. Therefore, it will fall under primary source. However, secondary source or secondary sources offer an analysis, interpretation, or a restatement of primary sources and are considered to be persuasive. They often involve generalization, synthesis, interpretation, commentary, or evaluation to convince the reader of the creator's argument. So when we say secondary source, they will use the primary source in order to have an article to have a literary piece for example they will uh, review a literary review a book review like that analysis story analysis like that they will fall under secondary source so bibliographies what why do you think bio biography and autobiography are different from one another so, biography, it is made by other people about a certain person. For example, I will make a biography of President Rodrigo Duterte. It will fall secondary source because I will make a biography of other people and I will not make mine. Meaning, it is not me who really experienced that, but I will make it for other people. So that will fall secondary source. But autobiography, meaning I will make my own biography, my story of life. And it will fall under primary because I will make it and I am the one who experienced it. I hope I made it clear. So we have examples of secondary sources here. So that's the only difference between the two. So I hope it is really clear to you. So primary and secondary source, novel. Then the secondary will be article analyzing the novel, the reviews, painting, the exhibition catalog explaining the painting. For example, it is captured and it's included in the magazine like that. 
letters and diaries written by historical figures. So biography of the historical figure. When I say biography, it is not the writer who experienced, but he or she explained it. For what he or she interpreted and what he or she got from these scenarios based from research. So, essay by a philosopher, textbook summarizing the philosopher's ideas, photo photographs of a historical event, documentary about the historical event, and so on. So, what, which is better between the two? So, persuasive essays and argumentative essays, even speeches to persuade, argue, or inform use primary and secondary sources. They complement each other to help you build a convincing argument or to prove a point. So we can use primary or secondary based on how we will present our ideas in article. Because if we will use it both, we maybe or most probably we can have a better literary piece. Because it is an open perspective where there are many sides of a particular topic were introduced were mentioned therefore they will think they will the readers will really think about a particular topic so remember to determine if something is used used as primary or secondary source there are some simple questions you can ask yourself does this source come from someone directly involved in the events or the one who experienced them it's primary or from another person it is secondary is it analyzing the source itself primary or using it for background information then that is secondary does the source provide original information that that is primary does it comment upon information from other sources than secondary. Again, primary, the one who experienced a particular situation is the one who wrote it. Secondary, the one who wrote it is just explaining, summarizing, or interpreting a particular situation, but he or she is not the one who experienced it. So keep in mind that all primary and secondary sources must be correctly cited to avoid plagiarism. So no matter if it's primary or secondary, you have to cite it, you have to acknowledge them because it's not your own property. So whatever source you have used, you will mention it to your article for respect and for a sign of intellectual property rights. So for independent activity one, find the examples of primary and secondary sources. So you will copy this table, the primary sources, secondary sources on your answer sheet based on the words that you will see in this puzzle. So you will categorize it if it's primary or secondary. For independent assessment one, you will write P if it's primary, then S for secondary. So when you say replica, it's not the original, but it is a close imitation, a close, um, a duplicate, which is very close to the original look. Independent activity number two. So identify which type of sources is being described by each of the following. So you will just copy this primary and secondary. Then you will write star in primary if it's primary. And you will draw a star if it's prime in primary if it's primary, then secondary if it is secondary. So you will read these descriptions. So independent assessment number two, you will rearrange these letters based on the clues given in each number. So answers only on your answer sheet. Independent activity number three, choose which source does not belong in each group. So number one, we have four words. So we have four terms in each number. So you will write on your answer sheet what is the word which is not included in 
the group. For example, three of the words are under primary, then the one is secondary. Then you will write the word which pertains to secondary on your answer sheet because it is the one who is not belong or which is not belong to the group. So independent assessment number three, watch and listen to the speech delivered by Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus by WHO or World Health Organization. He is Director General of WHO last July. It, the speech happened last July 17, 2020 on separate sheet of paper. Then answer the question below. So you can watch it but there is a quotation here. So you can basically you don't have internet access then answer these processing questions on your answer sheet so what i have learned you will complete these statements some examples of primary examples of secondary the difference between the two and what did you learn from this module so what i can do as one of the essential members of the community it is your task to become aware of the current situation in our society Identifying sources is vital in judging the validity of the information that you hear from social media, TV, radio, and the like. Your task is to listen to a news report about the latest events in our country that catches your interest. Collect information and identify the, informa the sources of the data. So, Write a brief essay with 5 to 10 sentences indicating your judgment about the validity of the presented evidence. So you will watch a particular news, even social media, Facebook, YouTube, TV, radio, and the like. So any application, any gadget that produces news, then you will get information what source they used for example you will include the statistics that five out of ten were 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 <clears throat> under poverty like that so any information and the source they used for example they mentioned the oh who for the may or lines from the mayor like that or they interviewed so you will include it then you will make five to ten sentences about your judgment is it valid is it true is it reliable is the news reliable or not so that's what i can do so it will fall under your performance task so we have rubrics here so you should consider this so the claimer point of the essay is well presented, well supported of evidence, accurate, credible, then you will get five. So for assessment, you will just choose among the letters of ch or the choices, A, B, C, or D. So you will read each statement in each number, then you will identify the idea being described in each so for additional activity so now you can distinguish primary and secondary and judge the validity so you will write a journal entry of what happened to you last week then ask a friend to share with you his her his or her amazing experience last vacation then think of the best title for each story so you will make two your own story or your own experience about last week then you will make the uh, you will make a text about the experience of your friend last vacation so the one is secondary because it's your friend's experiences then the one is primary because it's your own experience so here is the rubric the organization if you clearly presented 
The conventions, the grammar, punctuation, spellings are clearly and effectively correctly observed, then you will get 5 points. Then, if you have details which make the text clear and interesting, unforgettable, then you will get 5 points. So, I hope that you learn from our module number 4. Because it is really essential for us to judge the validity. We don't need to believe right away. We have to judge the validity, how true it is, how credible the sources are. So, we should be reliable and mindful and responsible reader, part of community, and most especially that we are using many applications on online applications so we should be a responsible social media user so if you have still questions you are free to message